Hello, in this video, I would like to talk about cross price elasticity of demand. So when we talk about cross price elasticity of demand, it will relate it to two goods. Okay, so we will have two goods in cross price elasticity. Cross price elasticity. It will have two goods, okay? So we have good X and we might have good Y, okay? So these two goods, they are related goods. If you still remember in chapter four, when we talk about related goods, there could be two types of related goods, right? Good X and good Y could be substitutes or good X or good Y could be complements. Now, for cross price elasticity, it will give you the information such as the good X price, okay? So it might tell you, okay, for good X, we have the price, I use here represents for good X price, okay? We might have two different price of good X. And then for good Y, we might have two different type of the quantity, okay? So we might have quantity. I use Y here represents for the demand of good Y and the demand of good Y in this second case, okay? So we probably will have two different type of the demand and then two different type of the price. Now, for cross price elasticity, always use E subscript to C represents for cross price elasticity. It will equal to percentage change in the demand of good Y, okay, response to the percentage change in price of good X. And we can also use midpoint methods to compute this cross price elasticity. So for midpoint methods, for midpoint methods, as we talked about before, it have several steps, right? So I'll just write it down for step one. We need to compute the percentage change in good wise demand. OK, so this part will equal to So this will equal to Good wise demand difference divide the average of good wise demand. Okay, so based on this, we can compute the percentage change in good wise demand. Okay, and then in second step, in second step, we need to compute the percentage change in good X price. Okay, so based on this, we will get the price difference for a good X. Divide the average of the good X price. And then based on the step one and step three for the uh, step one and step two for the last step. OK, for the last step, OK, we need to use the percentage change. So in last step. We will use the cross price elasticity will equal to the things that will compute from step one. Divide the percentage that will compute in step two. OK, so from this three steps, we can compute the cross price elasticity. OK, now based on this information, can we solve for this question? So for this question, let's look at this question. It tells you the price of the good X decreased from $6 to $4. And then the demand of good Y increases from 30 units to 40 units. Use the midpoint methods to compute the cross price statistic of demand. Okay, so now based on the given information, okay, and then based on what we just talked about here, we can try to solve this question, OK? 
Okay, so I'll just write down how to figure out the solution. We will use the midpoint method, so we were using those three steps. Okay, so we have the step one. Compute the percentage change in crown in the demand of the good Y. Okay, so here you can using forty units minus thirty units. That will be the difference in good Y's demand, right? Divide average of good Y's demand, and then this will gives you the percentage change in good Y. Okay. Will equal to nearly equal to twenty eight percent. Okay, and then in the second step, you need to compute the percentage in the price of good X, right? So we use the four dollars minus previous six dollars. That will be the price difference, and then divide the average of price. Forty percent, okay. But this forty percent here, please don't forget, there is a negative sign here. This is four dollars minus six dollars, so we have a negative sign. Okay, so this is important. Don't forget this negative sign. So based on this, we can compute the cross price elasticity, right? The cross price elasticity based on our calculations here. The cross price elasticity will equal to the percentage change in demand of good Y twenty eight percent. Divide the percentage change in good X price negative forty percent. So it will give us nearly okay the cross price elasticity of these two goods negative point seven. Okay, so this will be the answers for cross price elasticity, but. From this cross price elasticity, we also can know the relationship between good X and good Y. So you can notice when good X price decrease. Okay, I'll just write it down. I'll just write down the mechanism here. Okay, so when good X price decrease, which means good X become cheaper. So there is a direct impact. On the quantity of good X, right? So good X become cheaper. Consumers buy more good X, right? Consumers buy more good X, and at the same time, you can notice nothing changes in good Y's price, right? But good Y's demand also increase because of good X demand increase. Then what's the relationship between these two goods? We would like to say these two goods they are complements, such as let's talk about the bagel and cream cheese. So you can notice from this example, okay, if bagel's price decrease, first consumers will buy more bagel, right? And because of cream cheese and bagel always eating together, even cream cheese price doesn't change. But because of consumption of bagel increase, then the demand of cheese also increase. So bagel and cheese they are complements. Okay, so this reflected in the answer, which one could be correct? I think option A here is correct. Okay, those two goods they are complements. Okay.